I can't turn off the sound of your voice. The fear. The pain. The anger. I cannot pull myself from the dream of being by your side frozen. Afraid to intervene. Afraid to touch your hand. To tell you perhaps it is all a lie. Not a lie. But a story fabricated in the hearts of men seeking a reprieve from power, responsibility, and insatiable carnal thrust. You ask me if I am afraid of death. Why? Because you think this world is so wicked? So horrible? That we are all careening towards damnation? I am not afraid of death. People don't believe me when I say that, and maybe that was the fixation I had with suicide all these years. To prove that I was more afraid of life than death. Because why should I be? I was raised to believe that death was conquered by death. By resurrection, a resurrection always foreseen and experienced by an eternal martyr always in control. The recipient, judge, juror, and sacrifice. No, I can most definitely say I am not afraid of death. In fact, it had been my life's goal. Strange to say that, right? I know you want me to look at the big picture with small eyes to squint as you do at an abstract painting pretending to see the colors of hope, love, and salvation. You want me to look sideways through my dark eyelashes at a painting made of lines, circles, splatters, and brush strokes. You want me to say it came from nowhere but the hand of an omnipotent being. While I'm staring at the drop cloth. Buckets of paint half full and pungent, the smell of wet chemistry making my eyes water. I'm not saying it's not beautiful. I'm just confused that you see blood where I see life. Evolving and growing, mutating in perfection as the catalyst for the better yet to come. You can say I'm possessed by a demon. Listening to lies, self-abhorrent, a fool a flesh. You shake your head in your shackles, saying, Come, bow before that which can and has and will destroy that which does not bring glory to its name. Like a hungry tyrant whose toes I would have sucked for the sheer gratitude of being lifted from my debaucherous flesh. You see, I take things literally. And so they called me manic. They called me crazy bipolar, self-absorbed, a slut. I wasn't told that it's okay to be imperfect. I was told with flannel graphs and sing-song hymns that I deserve the most horrendous death, to burn in agony forever. But be grateful. Oh, how fortunate you are to be born to a pastor, to have the chance of knowing glory, of knowing a crown, a mansion, a crystal sea, eternal paradise. Simply say his name, pray this prayer, he will not refuse those who call, he will not abandon you, he will lead you beside still water, he will deliver you from evil. And in the same breath I hear this. You have to hear this, you can't have it one way and not have the reverse of the coin. What can be red, blood red, between the lines? This is to those who do not believe. You do not have enough faith. You are arrogant. You want your own way. You think you're too smart. You think you know better. You have created a god, a god in your head, and it is you. Blasphemous heretic. He, the true living Savior, hates your sin, hates your imperfection. I didn't say these things, though you accuse me of being dramatic. These are the lines I have heard from you. I can't change them. Believe me, I tried. Tried to tear them from my skin in bloody stripes. He did not change from the Old Testament to the New. No. 
God does not change, but his need for blood, the blood of something pure, was satisfied only by himself, who he tore in two, to crucify and resurrect as a symbol of love. And a third time he was stretched out as Holy Spirit to indwell you, to assure you that any good thought or deed could never be your own, but his alone. Munchausen by Proxy Committed by a loving Heavenly Father Burn me at the stake, preacher, rabbi, prophet, saint. Wait for me to grovel with pigs, to come staggering home, starved and desperate for the loving arms of a divine savior. Mask your own protector's transgression so much like the ones you would commit had you the power and the glory to enact them. Rage perfected, jealousy perfected, dominance perfected, genocide perfected, wrath Love, mercy, peace, dominance. You wanted to be on the winning side of such malevolence enacted over the single act of disobedience accorded in this oligarch's eternal plan so that he may play merciful magistrate to a world of already love-hungry children. Be my mother-fucking-guest. Deconversion. <laughs>